We all know that 70 millimeter film creates a higher quality, more beautiful image than 35 millimeter film. It's why certain filmmakers like Christopher Nolan, Quentin Tarantino, and Kenneth Branagh still use this format today, even when other options like digital exist. But that's not what I want to talk about in this video. Instead, I want to talk about the technical details of the different 70 millimeter film formats that have been used throughout the history of filmmaking. What do they look like compared to 35 millimeter? And what about the different versions of 70 millimeter film? How do they compare to each other? Let's go ahead and take a look. Standard 35 millimeter film is four perforations high and 35 millimeters across. It has an aspect ratio of 1.37 by one and a theoretical resolution of approximately 5K. 70 millimeter film is five perforations high and 70 millimeters across. 65 millimeters is for the image, with the extra five millimeters being used for six high quality sound channels. It has an aspect ratio of 2.2 by one and a theoretical resolution of approximately 12K, slightly more than double that of 35 millimeter film. But what about the different types of 70 millimeter film? How do they compare to each other? The three most popular 70 millimeter film formats that have been used are Todd AO, Super Panavision 70, and Ultra Panavision 70. All of these formats came about in the 1950s. This was when television started to compete with movies for viewership, and the studios responded with several different innovations. This included high quality, widescreen, 70 millimeter film. Todd AO was the first of these 70 millimeter formats. It was launched in 1955 with the film Oklahoma. It had an aspect ratio of 2.2 by one and was originally intended to be shown on a curved screen, similar to Cinerama. Cinerama was a process where three images were projected simultaneously on a curved screen to create one ultra widescreen image. Todd AO was described by its creator, Mike Todd, as Cinerama where everything comes out of one hole. The first two films shot on Todd AO also used 30 frames per second. This was slightly faster than the standard 24 frames per second that most movies are shot at. However, this made it difficult to create standard 35 mm release prints from Todd AO movies, since 35 mm was projected at 24 frames per second. All subsequent Todd AO films reverted back to the standard frame rate. Ultra Panavision 70, which was originally branded as MGM Camera 65, came out in 1957 with the release of Rain Tree County. What makes Ultra Panavision unique is that it used anamorphic lenses with a 1.25 times squeeze. When it was projected with an anamorphic lens, the image would be de-squeezed, creating an aspect ratio of 2.76 to 1. This is one of the widest aspect ratios used in filmmaking. The last version of 70mm on this list is Super Panavision 70. It was Panavision's version of the Todd AO system and was first used in 1959 with The Big Fisherman. Its specs are basically the same as Todd AO, using a 2.2 to 1 aspect ratio. The only difference is that it never experimented with frame rates choosing instead to stick with the 24 frames per second right from the get-go. Eventually, at the beginning of the 1970s, 70 mm film was no longer being used as a format to shoot movies. However, 70 mm blow-ups were starting to become more popular, peaking in the 1980s. But what exactly is a 70 mm blow-up? It's the process of taking 35 mm film and blowing it up to 70 mm. While the image quality is not as good as one that was shot on 70mm, it did offer an image that was superior to one projected on 35mm. But the main reason to blow 35mm up to 70mm was to take advantage of the six audio channels. At the time, 35mm film still used just one audio channel. The six audio channels of 70mm film allowed for a better theatrical experience. By the 1990s though, digital sound had come along. And when this was paired with 35 mm film, it was a much cheaper option than blowing up to 70 mm. This led to a significant decline of the use of 70 mm film. Despite this decline, and even with the current use of digital cameras, 70 mm is still used today. Films like The Hateful Eight, Dunkirk, and Murder on the Orient Express 
are either all or partially shot on 70mm. Some theaters even brought in 70mm projectors to show these films in that format. And that's the technical details of 70mm film. By going through all of this, it's easy to see why it's considered such an incredible format for making a movie. The image it creates is amazing. And if you ever get the chance to see a film that was both shot and projected on 70mm, do it. It's 100% worth it. Thanks for watching.